Ein ganz herzliches Willkommen und einen wunderschönen guten Very Morgen. Good morning, live ladies and gentlemen, live from Hockenheim. We are looking into the future today, into the future of the DTM. A special story that started in 1984 and in the past couple of days a lot of things have been posted, a lot of things on the Facebook pages with this sentence, tomorrow is now. Uh, many things have been talked about uh, about the future of the DTM and exactly that what it is about today in the next hour. We will be talking about the future. We will talk about the battle for the championship title at Hockenheim this weekend, but we're also looking into the future next year and beyond. Exciting conversations and a lot of motorsport. This is a Geschichte von Rivalen. Oh, there is contact between the two of them this time. Von Freunden. Von Champions. Yeah, yeah. Sie haben uns in ihren Bann gezogen. Wir haben mit ihnen gejubelt. Wir haben den Atem angehalten. Wir haben gezittert, gestaunt, gelitten und gefeiert. Dies ist die Geschichte einer einzigartigen Rennserie. Immer am Limit, über Grenzen hinweg. Es ist die Geschichte der DTM. Und jetzt ist die Zeit reif. Reif für das nächste Kapitel. Das nächste Kapitel, das ready ich for the next chapter and that's what I would like to talk about and to do so I have standing next to me the boss of the DTM, Gerhard Berger. Gerhard, before talking about the next chapter, it's uh, on purpose that we're standing next to this car, uh, the one of the Mercedes that raced in back in 1995. You were racing in the DTM as well, uh, obviously you remember it well, images from the past, a lot of emotions. Uh, tell us a little bit about it, what it means. DTM has a great history, it started in 1984, so over 30 years. Uh, the DTM has been popular among the fans, it speaks for itself. We've uh, had many different eras with different technical regulations, uh, a lot of people who were in charge, um, different person personalities, uh, and the DTM has always managed to make their way into the heart of the fans. And when I look into this, I see uh, sponsors like Bosch or Dekra who have been uh, accompanying the DTM for over 30 years. And it shows that it's uh, a stable platform, it's serious, and uh, the partners uh, really appreciate and as uh, you see on the media coverage as well, the fans uh, watch it on TV uh, week after week. Hopefully uh, we will have uh, spectators on site in the future again as well. Uh, currently, uh, obviously, it's not uh, the case due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but still uh, we're grateful and delighted that uh, the final of the season could be held, uh, can be held in the first place. We've had a great season. The grand final this weekend here at Hockenheim, a good battle between two or maybe even three drivers. Uh, tell us a little bit about your expectations for the weekend. Yes, we have a finish uh, in the DTM the way the fans like it. Uh, it's been a very difficult situation with the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, a lot of uh, obstacles we had to deal with, but uh, we have completed uh, all uh, the eight events so far and uh, we haven't had any cases of COVID-19 infections, so thanks to the uh, hygiene and safety concept. But uh, without fans, it's, it's, it's really difficult, I have to say so. But at the end of the season, we, we're tired. And when you look at the, the grandstands, you would like to, for the fans to be there. But we've seen great racing. Uh, we've seen it on TV, uh, on Sat1 in the German-speaking regions, Saturday and Sunday. It will be a thrilling finale. And uh, it could be uh, the final lap on, on Sunday in the race who can, who, that will be deciding, decisive about who will be the champion. Um, we've 
it's going down to the wire, which is uh, one of the things that's typical for the DTM. Uh, it's, it's, you can't really predict it, and that's what's making the DTM so exciting. Uh, there's also Nico Müller and uh, even Robin Franz is an outsider who has still chances, and uh, all three of them will have to fight. It's a battle between Germany and Switzerland. It's a battle between Team Abt and Team Rosberg. So I think there's a lot of potential for really good racing. René Rast, 304 points. Um, Nico Müller and Robin Franz a little bit further down. What do you expect? I, I can't say it really. Um, I think uh, France um, will be will have a difficult time, but between Rust and, and Müller, it's uh, going to be really uh, really exciting, and, uh, and that's um, I'm looking forward to it. Let's move forward a little bit, a uh, couple of meters. Talking about 2021, uh, I've said it already. Um, one of the things that has been talked about so much over the last couple of weeks. Uh, the future of the DTM, how is it going ahead, what is happening, uh, what has been planned? Uh, this car will be playing a role in it with a view to the regulations. Uh, can you explain from your perspective what will change and what will remain? I think uh, let's take a step back. Uh, for us, it's been very, very important that um, the platform will remain intact, uh, will remain unchanged. And uh, it really was our aim to develop the platform uh, to make it an experience for the entire family, for all generations, for the kids, for the mother, the father, the young children. Everybody will find something. Uh, obviously, racing is always the core of the DTM platform. It's the DNA of the DTM professional drivers, wheel to wheel, uh, and as I said before already, um, when we look back into the history, over the years, the DTM has always changed uh, its technical regulations every now and then, and that's exactly what's going to, uh, to happen now. The new regulations uh, are based on the, the FIA GT3 regulations that were issued a couple of years ago. But uh, everything around it in the DTM will absolutely remain unchanged. The professional approach will remain, the pit stops. Uh, so technical regulations change uh, towards GT3. For me personally, it's sad to see class one go because it was an excellent set of regulations. Uh, but GT3 regulations uh, comes along with different chances. Uh, there's a lot of variety among the brands, among the manufacturers, and that's one of the attractive things. Uh, it's one of the things that's been discussed. Uh, brands leaving the DTM, new brands welcoming into the series, something we will be talking about. Uh, we have some cars here that uh, hopefully we will be actually seeing in the DTM in 2021. Uh, there are four pillars that we will talk about, and a fifth pillar will be added as well. Uh, there's a lot of uh, things behind the DTM we will be talking about today as well. But first of all, the question, where will we be racing? And that's what we're going to present now. The DTM 2021 will be racing all over Europe.
So these are the circuits on the calendar. Nine events with the start of uh, at the end of May in St. Petersburg. Then we continue at Monza, a track that was planned for this year. Um, you are well advanced in the planning. Uh, is it completely clear that the season opener will be in St. Petersburg? Well, maybe first of all, I'm really uh, excited about the calendar. It's a good international calendar with uh, circuits that are very exciting for the drivers. Uh, a lot of uh, tracks that uh, is also used by Formula One. Uh, really attractive race circuits that uh, will be very important and remain very important to make it attractive for drivers and for teams. We start in Russia, but there's still an asterisk behind it. It has to be confirmed uh, just because um, we are not certain that this time the slot is not too easy because of the COVID-19, uh, too early because of the COVID-19 situ situation. Uh, we want to be as safe as possible to allow for fans to be present from the first race onwards. So that's uh, we're in the process of planning. We're not quite certain about the race in Russia, but when we look to the next race at Monza in June, I think um, we have a good chance to uh, stage the race with uh, spectators being present on site. Obviously, a great racetrack, Monza. I'm really excited uh, going there with the DTM. The Red Bull Ring is making its comeback on the schedule. Uh, we have our highlight at the Norris Ring, uh, something we're always looking forward to, everybody. Uh, the finale at Hockenheim. We go to Zolder, to Assen in the Netherlands. So the core is Germany. There's absolutely no question about it. 50% of the race is in Germany and then uh, neighboring countries and I think uh, everybody looking to the schedule uh, will find something and will say that uh, it's a good thing. Uh, Austria, Zolder that has produced uh, great race weekends uh, recently, uh, last year as well, the Norris Ring, Nürburgring, uh, so motorsport fans can uh, look forward to it and hopefully we will be able to welcome many of them at the track in 2021, but all of them will be asking, what kind of cars uh, are we seeing? You've been talking about some brands already, and I would like to welcome some other people here. I'm happy that Thomas Jäger is here on behalf of Mercedes AMG, the new sporting organizer of the AVD, the Automobile Club of Germany, Lutz Leif Linden, and Chris Reinke of Audi Sport Customer Racing. Chris, very good morning to you as well. So, Mercedes in this circle. Uh, let's start with Thomas Jäger. Is this the comeback of Mercedes-Benz in the DTM? Uh, well, Mercedes um, has been a major part of the DTM for decades, and until two years ago, it was involved as a factory team here as well. So now, with the new GT3 regulations to FIA regulations, uh, there's also the possibility again for the Mercedes AMG to be uh, involved here again. And we're really delighted to be able to support our customer racing teams, and we hope for many of them to be on the grid for next year. But that, of course, is the big question. Gerard, can I continue with you? Um, are there already Mercedes teams that have contacted you and expressed their interest to be present? Well, not, not just contacted me, but they have really confirmed their participation. Um, a lot of uh, manufacturers uh, we've been talking to. Uh, the big advantage, as I said already, with the GT3 regulations, there are many different manufacturers that um, can really uh, rely on cars that have been de developed already to these uh, regulations. So there's a lot of support. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, if it's Porsche, Aston Martin, McLaren, Ferrari, Audi, of course. Uh, so um, there's a lot of uh, manufacturers who immediately contacted us and said, we want to be present there. So interest is, is huge. Uh, registration has, has uh, have opened. Um, Obviously, the deadline is until the end of February before the teams have everything uh, completed. But I'm, I'm really confident that we will see a, a varied field of brands on the grid for next year. 
uh, for Audi, Chris Reinke. Uh, what is it like? Uh, fans are asking themselves as well. Uh, what is the procedure like? Are teams coming to you and saying, Audi, we would like to race there uh, uh, with the R8 in the DTM? Uh, what is it like? Yes, correctly. That's. Um, the way it is at the moment. Uh, we as Audi Sport customer racing with the R8 LMS, uh, we have a strong product. Uh, we have um, over 100 cars uh, running worldwide. So uh, there's the premium brand that is the DTM. So now bringing these two things together uh, is uh, obviously a very positive thing. Uh, obviously, as a team, first of all, you go to the DTM, you look to the regulations and you submit your entry and then you ask us for Audi uh, for some support. We have uh, had a support system in place for 12 years with the spare part service at the, um, in the paddock. We have a service truck there, we have technical support. Uh, but at the end of the day, it is customer racing. So uh, that means that every entrant, every team is responsible for its own business model and its own, own package. Thomas, also to you, um, as a brand, of course, you have interest in a platform like the DTM, but also you want to see the best drivers behind the wheel of a Mercedes. It's very important, obviously. Um, yes, definitely. The DTM is a great platform. It has a great history. I've been racing here myself for four years. And uh, obviously, for me, it's important to see our cars on the grid here. And now it's a good step to publish the schedule uh, to avoid any clashes with other race series to allow for the planning of the teams and the drivers to make the best possible combinations. Because obviously, everybody wants to be competitive and wants to succeed here. Lutz Leif Linden on behalf of the uh, Automobile Club von Deutschland. Uh, you're the new sporting organizer. What does that mean exactly? Well, uh, in motorsport, you have the, the commercial promoter and you have the, the sporting organizer. The AVD has been uh, in place since 1899. And since 1923, we've been organizing the German Grand Prix. So it's uh, a long history, a long heritage. Uh, Garrett and I have known each other for many years. And as the opportunity arose to become involved as a sporting organizer, um, you're involved in the regulations. Uh, you're involved in an issue like safety at the track. You uh, um, submit the officials for race control, the race official as a service provider at a very high level. What is the cooperation like? Well, we've known each other for a long time. I joined the AVD for about three years ago, and around the same time, Gerard joined the DTM. So that uh, is how the opportunity arose for a cooperation. The attractive thing is uh, to develop a DTM 4.0, so to say, um, acknowledging the, uh, the history and the heritage of the series, but also looking into some possibilities for the future. Let's talk about uh, new target groups you would like to reach. How realistic is it, Chris, for instance, to you that we will see drivers like René Rust, uh, Mike Rockefeller, uh, see in the DTM again? It has, be, it has to be in the interest of Audi. Well, first of all, the interest of Audi is to put a solid customer racing program in place. Uh, it would be a dream to establish this great name, the DTM. Uh, but first of all, we have to create a business case. How can we enable teams to participate here? And then the final thing, which is a very nice element, is to select the drivers. Uh, Sebastian Vettel has uh, spoken up already, so don't give all the places away yet. Uh, it is a fact. It is in your interest to have the best drivers. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we will have the best drivers. Uh, we will be the best uh, race series in the world. So first of all, I would like to uh, thank the gentlemen here. Uh, the drivers are really eager to race in the DTM 2021 as well. The finale Hockenheim is normally always an absolute highlight, but this year also for me a little bit mixed feelings, because the 
Class One Ära zu Ende geht. Aber meistens ist es so, wenn eine Ära zu Ende geht, geht es natürlich in Zukunft auch weiter. Und das hat der Gerhard mit seinem Team ganz klar unter, unter Eindruck gestellt, dass die DTM weitergeht. Ja, jeder, der mich kennt, der weiß, wie lange ich von der DTM geträumt habe. Und äh, die letzten vier Jahre war ich Teil der DTM, habe die DTM erlebt und habe mir meinen Lebenstraum in der DTM erfüllt. Und natürlich jetzt im Moment hat die DTM eine schwierige Zeit hinter sich, aber ich glaube, wir haben ganz, ganz viele tolle Leute, die im Hintergrund arbeiten, dass es in den nächsten Jahren eine tolle Zukunft hat. Und äh, ich glaube weiterhin an die Plattform der DTM und würde mich auch freuen, wenn ich äh, in Zukunft immer noch Teil der DTM bin. Das Rennen jetzt mit den aktuellen Boliden äh, ist einerseits traurig und andererseits genieße ich noch, äh, ich werde jede Runde einfach in den Auto genießen. Es war für mich immer ein Traum, dorthin zu kommen. Und wenn ich zurückgucke und sehe, dass ich die Meisterschaft zweimal gewinnen konnte, ähm, dort meine größten Erfolge gefeiert habe, freut mich es natürlich, dass die DTM weitergeht. Ich bin sehr gespannt, ähm, was sie zu springen wird und bin sehr froh, dass es Gerhard Berger und ich geschafft haben, die Plattform äh, weiterhin sozusagen am Leben zu halten. Und ich denke, da kommt äh, vieles auf uns zu, wo wir uns freuen können. Und von dem her, ja, glaube ich, wird es ganz, ganz toll. Und ich freue mich auf die Zukunft. Und ich hoffe natürlich, dass auch ich wieder mit am Start bin ähm, und vor allem dann vor vollen Zuschauerrängen mit den Fans. Jetzt wollen wir mit den Teams sprechen. So, let's talk to the teams. Three representatives from professional teams are here. First of all, from Phoenix Racing Team Principal Ernst Moser. On behalf of Team Rosberg, Kimo Limatainen. And on behalf of the Yacht Team, Thomas Biermeier. Very good morning to you. Aaron, starting off with you, teams have to do their homework. They have to realign. What does it mean for a team uh, with a view to 2021 for Phoenix Racing? Well, when you've been racing in the DTM for so many years, the most important race series in Europe. Uh, so it's logical for next year to put a package in place as well. We are in good uh, negotiations. I think something uh, will be achieved, but uh, there's no signature on the paper yet. Uh, how does that actually work? Well, first of all, the most important thing is to uh, to raise the budget. Uh, that's what we're working on at the moment. Uh, we've been working with Audi for many years, so we're trying to establish a partnership. As you've heard, it's, uh, it's a customer racing model. It will be a bit different uh, compared to the years before, but uh, we're really working on getting this package together. Uh, so it's interesting for you to uh, keep your drivers the best of the best. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it has been working very well for many years with professional drivers in this series. The defending champion with uh, Team Rosberg, Kimo, uh, for you it's probably the same. First of all, the view to this weekend's season finale, but also the planning for 2021. A DTM without Team Rosberg is unthinkable for many fans. Yeah, definitely. We want to be part of it. And as Ernst said already, there are some things that need, need to be clarified. Uh, we have to raise the budget, we have to look at it, and that's what we're working at. And uh, we hope to be present there. How do, does a team raise a budget? Are you looking for sponsors? Yeah, definitely. Sponsors have to be in place. Um, we're also considering a pay driver model for one car. And, uh, well, let's wait and see what uh, can be achieved. Are you talking to the drivers? For instance, Jamie Green, uh, an old hand in the DTM, the defending champion, René Rust. Yeah, definitely. We're uh, talking to drivers. We're talking with uh, sponsors and partners. And that's, uh, yeah, that's as much as I can say at the moment. A lot of things are really uh, moving forward. Uh, also for the, say, uh, the apps team, uh, Thomas Biermeier, you have a smile on your face. You're in a special situation. You're racing Formula E next year with René Rust. Maybe also uh, racing for Rosberg in DTM. It's a bit unclear, but for you, a platform that the DTM uh, has to be interesting. Yeah, definitely. We've been part of the DTM since 2000. We're glad that Gerhard and his team uh, managed to keep the platform alive. It's clear that we will be present there as well. Uh, we have to do our homework. Uh, to ensure that uh, we will be there on the grid in Russia in May next year. Well, the planning has to be finalized uh, before Christmas uh, to have uh, certainty for the team. We have uh, employed 20 people, so uh, we have to know that uh, things are uh, moving forward. 
we're f uh, a lot further ahead than a couple of weeks ago when a lot of things were still uncertain. Now we have clear commitment from Audi team principals who are involved in the battle for the championship in the case of Kimo and um, Thomas Biermeier. So thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to a great weekend uh, start today with free practice and tomorrow with uh, the two races uh, tomorrow and Sunday. And hopefully we see each other 2021 in the DTM. So let's get back to Gerhard Berger on stage, who uh, will be glad to hear also what uh, to be hearing what the team principals are saying. The interest is there, that's for sure. Uh, now they have to do their own work. Um, that's all we can say for the moment, but it's it's still quite a lot already, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. The intention is there. Uh, all the, the applications for information are very substantial as well. When you look at the cars there, the, you see the Lamborghini, the Ferrari, the Audi. So the variety of brands is something that uh, will really delight all the fans. The BMW is lacking. Um, it, they have made a commitment. It's not quite certain. We have to wait for the car because the M4 is still in the homologation process. So the M4 won't be on the grid uh, before 2022. But uh, maybe in 2021 we will see some uh, other teams racing uh, with the M6 or maybe earlier the M4 already. The intention is there. Teams are highly motivated. Um, obviously, given the difficult economic situation at the moment because of COVID-19 and many other aspects, it's very difficult for teams to raise the budget. But from a budget perspective, uh, it's um, a big step forward. It, it's much more affordable when you compare it to the current Class 1 regulation. So that's a positive thing. It's a battle for sure, but it's a positive thing, the new element. We've been uh, talking about it often enough. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm seeing a very optimistic Gerhard Berger uh, when you compare it, for instance, to the situation in July. Yeah, I'm doing quite well, OK. I'm, we can look forward to it. So um, saying nothing wrong, we're looking, to many, looking forward to many different brands in the DTM 2021. Uh, one more thing I would like to add. Uh, the DTM is a platform in Germany in premium automotive segment uh, that we need to continue. We have to continue uh, all the suppliers, the whole industry. It's so significant to keep this platform alive, to fight for it, to pull together and to carry it over into the future. In this future, uh, for the moment, four platforms, four columns and pillars are playing a role in the DTM. The first pillar I can talk about is the DTM 2021. We've introduced it already. The next chapter is the second pillar, uh, very important. And here it's in third position. It's DTM eSports. Uh, Gerard, uh, tell us a little bit about it. Um, what kind of role is esports playing in your daily business? Yeah, it's definitely uh, the thing. Uh, the current genera generation, we have to approach and to address the current digital generation. So therefore, esports is a very important element that uh, we have integrated into our platform. Uh, we've had a couple of successful races already. We will see the finale as well later on. And uh, I think the interaction between the real world sport and the virtual sport is uh, for the fan a very great story, another great story. Uh, for us, it's our aim to see uh, maybe the digital champion one day racing in the, the real world race series as well. And of course, uh, also interesting to see how drivers from the real world race series uh, do on the on the simulator. Yes, I can say it from my own experience. We've shown it often enough as um, footages. Uh, Rene Rust, uh, Philip Eng, a lot of drivers who are really active in, in esports and simulator racing. So from that perspective, we're looking forward to it. And there are also esports drivers who uh, have landed in a race car and doing a good job. Yeah, definitely in the trophy, Felix von der Laden. 
I will be talking to the champion uh, later on, but let's look at what it's like DTM esports. Buzzing. Okay, there's the confirmation, and Jack Heafley is going to take race number one. He's had to win this race, and Myrna will take the checkered flag here at Spielberg. What a finish here, Connery. And you can see it there, the relief. He knows that he is the DTM Esports 2020 champion. So that's the view on the monitor. We see Moritz Lerner. He's the champion of the DTM Esports, Porsche Carrera Cup Esports. And now on the final straight at Hockenheim, Moritz, a very good morning to you. It's difficult to talk to you. You're so involved. Congratulations. A lot of achievements with all your championship titles you have won. Explain us briefly uh, for all those uh, who this, for whom this is new. What is, how does it work? You have the, the steering column shifting. You have the pedals. You have the steering wheel. Yeah, I have uh, the pedals. I'm in a race seat. Uh, the uh, steering wheel. Uh, the only thing that's missing are the G-forces, um, but it's simulated with some movement. So basically, it's not much different to uh, being in, in an actual car. I've been able to do a test with the GT4 car, which was my very first experience in a race car, and uh, I immediately felt at ease. How uh, big was the difference in terms of lap times? Well, the difference was about one second per lap. Uh, against somebody who's been racing for three years already. How did you start? My, fa my father was uh, really an, a motorsport enthusiast. Uh, we've been visiting the DTM at Norris Ring every year. Uh, I think this year was the first time in 10 years we didn't go. Uh, so um, we got a bit of a passion for motorsport. Uh, we had the pedals and the steering wheel on, on our own PC at home. Uh, quite low budget. We did it after school when we came home, my brother and I. And in the last couple of years, esports has uh, developed really well, and you can even make some money with it. So can we say you're a professional? Yeah, I could say so. Yeah. I'm uh, in the simulator every day uh, when preparations for the DTM esports. You have to practice at least two hours per day. So a lot of, uh, yeah, it takes a lot of time. Uh, what is it like? You drive against each other online? Yes, uh, you can. Uh, Compare it with the situation on the real-world racetrack. You have your teammates, you have all the other drivers. Uh, you see them on the track, uh, you see them around you, and that's how it goes. You know each other uh, among yourselves online as well? Um, are the drivers uh, also meeting up sometimes? Yeah, definitely. Uh, back in the day, you only uh, met online, uh, but I think about four or five years ago, there was this sim racing exhibition, and uh, all the sim racers in the world, they uh, met up for one weekend and uh, had fun, and uh, obviously competed in races as well. And uh, yeah, you, you, we, we, got, we actually got to know each other. Show us how you drive off. Maybe we can show it. So, first gear, and then you push the throttle. Uh, it's a bit difficult here. Yeah, we see it here. Normally, I'm driving with the headphones on. Can you communicate with, uh, with the other drivers? Yeah, there are some software, uh, like a team radio. Uh, especially with your teammates, you can uh, talk, but uh, not against the opponents, of course. Did you drive against uh, René Rust? Yeah, in the DTM Esports, uh, we drove against uh, many real-world drivers. Uh, I was in uh, Team Sheldon, so I was in the team with uh, Sheldon van der Linde. And we, uh, we had some fun uh, also on the software. And how, how good was Sheldon? 
In this championship, maybe not so good, uh, but I have to say the last couple of weeks have been quite stressful for him. But uh, he spent a lot of time in the simulator to, uh, to get better, to actually improve. Uh, when does your season end? Uh, it actually concluded uh, last week already. So that's how you became the champion in the DTM eSports, so congratulations. It's a new pillar on the DTM platform, very interesting to see. I've uh, been following the series since 2000 already. Uh, it's uh, great to see uh, how the things are developing. Yeah, definitely. My parents uh, think it's it's really cool. Uh, back in the day, uh, they were they said, yeah, it will always remain a hobby. But then it, it became clear that one day I could be able to make money with it. And now, obviously, the, my parents are supporting me really much, very much. All the information can be found also on the website dtm.com. Tonight there is something, the DTM Super Finale with uh, all the champions from the Super, uh, the top level uh, sim racing series. Sheldon van der Linde will be there. Uh, he will be uh, racing on the simulator here as well. We have the sim lined up here and Sheldon van der Linde will be there as well. Thank you very much, Maurice Lerner. Good luck for next year as well. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next year again to defend your title. Yes, I very much hope so. So, what do we have? What kind of pillars do we have? We have presented two of them already, DTM 2021 and DTM Esports. And um, at Spa Francochamps, a new series made its debut at Spa Francochamps the DTM Trophy. A successful debut season for the DTM Trophy this year, and I'm really delighted to have five-time DTM champion Bern Schneider standing next to me. Thank you for being here. Gerhard, uh, your first verdict, the debut season, not easy, was it? Well, uh, let's get back to eSports first. Uh, this uh, driver Heinemann, he is coming directly from eSports, so that's how he got started in the motorsport world. Yeah, definitely. eSport is the platform where you can get started uh, without uh, having to invest uh, a huge budget. Heinemann uh, won the title in the ANG support program in 2018. He uh, was allowed to go onto the racetrack at Valencia together with me two years ago. And it was the very first time he actually sat in a race tar car. He never had any previous experience. And uh, with Manuel Metzger sitting alongside him, he was just as fast as I was uh, driving all on my own. Tim Heinemann is a champion of the current season. We've seen some footage of him already. Uh, somebody who has uh, impressed us from uh, the very first day onwards. Gerard, I know it from many conversations. Uh, it's a very important thing to you, the DTM trophy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, as you see that uh, some kids can make the step from be it go-kart racing or be it sim racing into the DTM trophy and then maybe even use it as a stepping stone to become a professional to earn some money as a professional driver in the DTM. And that's the way the platform uh, would like to present itself. So that's why uh, we initiated the trophy for this year. 
We had a very late start uh, only in January. Uh, we had everything in place for us to say, OK, we, we do this trophy. And in spite of the COVID situation, we got it started. Uh, we've seen some great racing, a very well-balanced field with uh, many different brands. So we um, support it very much and we keep uh, on to do so um, to have a successful next year again. Bernd, when somebody has won the DTM title five times like you, uh, a legend, and then there's some young guy coming from eSports and then he's just as quick as the five-time champion. Obviously, with all the experience you have as a racing driver, uh, you said uh, he needs to, and he deserves to be backed. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I know it from uh, the days in the past uh, when the young kids made their way from go-karts to Formula 3 and then into the DTM. Uh, so we had some po people coming from eSport in the past already, but somebody really at that level getting started and then really winning the championship. It was clear that uh, he, deserved his, uh, he deserved my support. Uh, we are really complementing each other. He has a lot of experience in, in eSports. Um, he learned me a lot of things, uh, even for myself, for other drivers that I'm supporting. And I try to help him a little bit with uh, the experience I have. Uh, obviously, at the racetrack, you don't have a reset button, so you, uh, it always costs money when you cause some damage. You have to be careful. Um, so uh, you don't have to learn him anything about the tracks, but some race experience is something that I can help him with. Will we see Tim Heinemann in the DTM? Well, obviously, it depends on the sponsors. There is e interest from, from eSports to support uh, these young talents as well. Uh, but DTM will be a bit difficult, but it definitely is the main goal. Uh, I think in terms of driving talent, he is absolutely ready for the DTM. What does the DTM boss say? Well, the doors are open and that's the purpose of the series, that the champion of this series can make its way uh, into the DTM. Gerard, the trophy uh, was just a start. It will continue 2021. Yeah, definitely. We want to expand it further. We've seen the calendar. We will see one race more next year, so seven rounds for the DTM trophy. Maybe we'll see some uh, very small regulations uh, changes. Uh, we're doing very well with the balance of performance, but we will also be adding uh, success ballast for the first three drivers. Uh, in each race, uh, so uh, to emphasize the driving skills and the driving talent of the individual drivers as well. I'm happy that we can continue to talk uh, later on about uh, the next level, that Bernd will be uh, very important for you as well. It's. Um, has to do with the history of the DTM. And that's something that comes up every now and then when talking to fans. So it's the fourth pillar DTM classic. It really is an emotional moment to be standing next to cars like these. It's very special. And then also to be able to see these cars being raced on track, as the footage already proved as well. It's great to see this car uh, from 1995. Obviously a dream for every motorsport fan. Jörg van Ommen, one of the drivers of these cars. But, uh, well, let's return to Gerhard Berger, Bernd Schneider and Lutz Lavlinen talking about DTM Classic. Bernd, uh, how emotional is it still for you, even with all the experience you have? 
Yeah, it's it's always like a deja vu uh, when you see a DTM car, uh, your phenomenon car. Um, in that year, I won the title for the first time here at Hockenheim. It's incredible. We had 500 horsepower of uh, engine output. Uh, they had a high standard of, of technology. It was even more advanced than Formula One at the time. It's, it's great, great fun to drive these cars, even today. And uh, there are some people around uh, Jörg Hatcher who have uh, really um, prepared the cars in a perfect way. I saw it at the Nürburgring and they really look, look like they were uh, 25 years ago. And all the fans who see it now are uh, really excited to see the cars being raced again. It's uh, thrilling. On one end, we see images like this, and then we talk about esports. So we have the complete circle in the DTM. It's a very emotional thing. What will DTM Classic be like next year? Well, it's very important that we uh, transport the unique history and the heritage of the DTM. Uh, when you look at this spectacular car, spectacular racing, and the drivers we see here, Klaus Ludwig, Bernd Schneider, Rosberg, Walter Reul, Stuck, uh, Heyer, everybody, everybody who was there, uh, names uh, that have gone down in history of motorsport, and uh, all the fans that came to the racetrack and uh, watched the weekend of the modern DTM are also delighted to uh, meet the people, to obtain some autographs and to uh, see some of these cars actually being raced with the cars from back in the day. So I think uh, we have to integrate this uh, this element. It's a very firm part of the concept, so we will, uh, we will definitely stick to it. We will see uh, the cars on track. We will see drivers uh, like Bernd Schneider. Will we see on the grid? Well, I've got a lot of uh, activities, but I'm, I'm always in contact with the guys, and I would be delighted to be able to drive together with uh, Klaus Ludwig. We've been talking about it already together, actually, and uh, when it fits into my schedule, definitely. Yeah, always very supportive to get classic elements on the platform, uh, and you need to, the drivers that come with it. It's uh, the key is the sport, and uh, therefore, Bernd, uh, you will have to be there. Well, it's uh, it's a highlight when you're allowed to do it, and, and I would uh, I would be happy to do so definitely. And I think I'll I'll make it fit somehow. Lutz Leif Linden, the sporting organizer. But when you uh, look at these cars, uh, there's also a lot of value out there, but, but still we see real racing. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, obviously, it's, it's very getting more and more difficult to find the right spare parts, so some of them are a little bit more cautious, but uh, definitely on track there's racing, it's competition, and there's contact and everything that comes with it. It will never stop. Uh, when you look at Klaus Ludwig, he's 71, and the last time he drove, he drove just like he did 25 years ago. Let's left in, and uh, what kind of role is uh, AVD playing? Well, AVD has been organizing the AVD Old Timer Grand Prix, the biggest classic car event in Europe for 48 years. Uh, we've had uh, up to 600 cars uh, over a weekend, so that's our expertise and our uh, knowledge and in this area. So when Gerhard and Frederick Elsner and I discussed what we could do as a support program, uh, it was quite clear that uh, next to all the modern things like esports, uh, you have uh, to integrate the classic uh, part as well. It's, uh, a lot of car, great cars uh, are around uh, drivers like uh, yourself, like your team, Klaus Ludwig. Uh, and that's what the fans out there would like to see. I remember last year's season finale uh, here at Hockenheim, and, and people were really lining up, and, and uh, sometimes even more people uh, standing there to watch uh, the old cars. Than, than the modern ones, and uh, yeah, we really uh, should not forget that. So it's clear from your perspective as well, the sporting organization, uh, so Bernd and all the others, they have to be careful with the cars. 
Yeah, well, when they put their helmets on, uh, they're not careful anymore. I'd like to uh, thank you all very much. I'm looking forward to working together next year. We're looking forward to Ben Schneider. I'm sure we'll see you one day in the Classic Cars, DTM Classic, our fifth pillar. Gerhard, and let's now look into the future together. Just come along with me as now we walk down here the hall and there is uh, a big box that I showed uh, at the very beginning and I know that uh, a lot of work uh, has been done around this box. A lot of things happened in the last 12 months. Tomorrow is now, it's what we see here. So now let's talk about pillar number five. So, and that's uh, what we will see now will no longer be a box, but uh, what's in it, and that's uh, the future. Tomorrow is now the Zukunft der DTM. The future of the DTM. Pillar number five. A fully new car. DTM electric. That is the new pillar, and a driver that we all know is getting out of this car. We still don't know who he is, but we were about to find out. And some fans will recognize him. Here is Timo Scheider. Timo, very good morning. Uh, do you know how long I've been in there? <laughs> I'm quite hot now. The DTM champion 2008 and 2009, also a DTM legend, driving this very, very new car, DTM Electric, from the box. Tell us about your emotion at this moment. What do we have here? Oh, it has uh, over 100,000 horsepower. So he will tell us very soon uh, whether it's uh, actually any good or not. He has completed a couple of laps with it already. Um, this car includes uh, one of the key elements of uh, the future, and that's something we will be talking about later on. But first of all, let's hear from uh, Timo Scheider. A fully electric car that you already yeah, drove here at Hockenheim yesterday. And, uh, yeah, definitely. I tried not to have an opinion beforehand, to just uh, get into the car and enjoy what was awaiting me. Uh, Scheffler uh, with the engine, the steer by wire, I was really, really impressed by it. Not just as a driver, it's uh, 880 uh, kilowatts, uh, over 1,000 horsepower. So. It has shown that uh, this is the future, and for me, it's exactly the right moment to make this mark and Scheffler um, turn it into reality in a, in a really great way. We will be uh, showing some footage over the weekend on the international live feed and also on the German uh, TV broadcast. Uh, I'm standing between two real petrol heads, two classic race drivers, uh, Timo Scheider. I know it from you as well. Uh, you're rather sceptical when it was uh, people were talking about electric, but now you're really enthusiastic. Yeah, of course, I, I like the smell of petrol and oil, and I like the sound. Uh, and, yeah, but things have changed. Uh, there's a new era. We have to identify and have to accept it. It's the way it is. And I was there in 2000 when the DTM started, and. Uh, now, in the new feature, uh, future, it's great to be part of it. 
So I didn't get any money from Scheffler to say what I'm saying now, but uh, really 1,200 horsepower, uh, four-wheel drive accelerating out of the hairpin yesterday for the first time. It was like a roller coaster ride. Uh, ride. This feeling I have in the car is really very, very special for a race driver. You can never have enough power, but um, 1,200 horsepower is, is quite decent, actually. I didn't uh, see Timo beforehand, so uh, what he's saying is one of the most important things for me as petrol heads, but we're living in this world. It's the current situation. Uh, but we have to uh, also think about the future on our platform. We have to work on sustainable technologies. Uh, Bernd Schneider uh, uh, said already earlier on that uh, once we had a point where the DTM was more advanced than Formula One, and that's where we need to, to go back again. For me, it's very important to get this, this impression. Is it the extreme thing that we're looking for? Uh, race drivers, from what drivetrain the performance is coming from, is, is uh, basically irrelevant. Uh, the, the, the most important thing is that you have the power, you have plenty of power, and that we as race drivers are required to deal with all the power and the performance and to handle it uh, in the cars in the right way. And I think, uh, yeah, the brief uh, has been quite good. Uh, you know that I'm uh, quite critical, maybe saying some more things than I actually should, but uh, I'm, I'm really keen to get back into the car and to be able to drive again. For me, it's important for the DTM to present this technology for the future, but also to, uh, to bring the fans along as well, that uh, they accept it as motorsport, as our motorsport. And at the end of the day, they're happy with the way uh, we are dealing it with. And I think and I hope that together with our strategic partner Scheffler and uh, with this car, uh, I'm convinced that uh, we can get it done. We'll get to talk uh, with the people from Scheffler who are there already, but uh, the fans will uh, ask already. Uh, we see here DTM 2022. Will it be one of the pillars? Well, first of all, we have to say, of course, uh, we have to look into the future, the long future. We are really looking forward to this variety of brands, to the exciting racing with these cars. But uh, next, alongside, we uh, don't want to lose time in advancing the technical development and say and, and look at what the technology for the day after tomorrow will be. And that's something uh, that could be something very interesting for maybe 2023, 2024 and beyond. It will be a parallel series. Yeah, it will be uh, one of the series, definitely. There will be some interaction. We'll see how it will develop. But uh, I think time has come to uh, really consider technology like this. Thank you very much. Your gleaming eyes, I will never forget that. Uh, thank you very much, the two-time DTM champion, Timo Scheider, who raced in the DTM for 17 years and uh, look forward to working with you as an expert over the weekend on Sat1 German television. Gerd, let's get back. The, we have the people from Scheffler here that we can continue to talk to. Welcome, and I'm really happy that uh, these people are here. The board member for automotive technologies of Scheffler, Matthias Sink, the head of e-mobility at Scheffler, Dr. Jochen Schröder, and for the DTM, responsible for transformation, competition and technology, Michael Reisel. A special moment, Mr. Sink, looking at this, how much excitement there was for you as a board member when Timo Scheider drove this car, these two meters. Mm, well, it was rather uh, bright than excitement. Um, uh, it's great to see the car working that uh, we have been working on for uh, many years, uh, for many months already. I spoke uh, to Timo already beforehand. And it's great to get his feedback uh, from his perspective as a racing driver. And I think that's the best uh, acknowledgement we can get. Dr. Schroeder, for you, it's probably the same when you uh, look at it here. Not just a clear view into the future, but uh, now here already. Um, 
Computer animations and everything is, is very nice, but now we have the actual car here with Timo Scheider as a driver. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, uh, to me, it's an emotional thing. I have to say, uh, I'm uh, really promoting e-mobility at Scheffler and electric racing, uh, real racing with so much power on the track and on, on the racetrack uh, that it, to see it work is a very nice moment. We've been talking about it already in the DTM, a lot of emotions. Uh, here we see the DTM. What will the position of the DTM electric on, as the fifth pillar on the DTM platform will be? Well, it uh, was very important for us when uh, conceptualizing the DTM electric to incorporate the DNA of the D DTM. It has to be fun, it has to be entertaining, it has to be competitive, uh, fair competition. Uh, for the fan out there, the DTM electric has to be just as exciting and maybe even more exciting than all the other DTM series and all the elements uh, that are crucial for the DTM we've been talking about already. Uh, it's been uh, very exciting and great fun to uh, be involved in this project. And it's uh, a big moment to be able to show this prototype now. I can uh, remember some social media postings when uh, a visionary film uh, computer animation was presented last year. Within a couple of months, uh, you now actually succeeded in uh, getting this first uh, study uh, on track. Uh, the real car now on, on track. Um, so uh, this is the prototype. Hopefully we will see uh, more cars. Uh, uh, you've had a lot of things on your mind for this season, saving the DTM, ensuring the future of the DTM, but also this series. Uh, were you able to sleep? Uh, well, I was able to sleep, but the question was uh, whether our team uh, has been able to sleep. Uh, a lot of work has been invested uh, with uh, a lot of people being involved. Great cooperation with uh, Scheffler. And uh, here uh, you have the, the technical representatives, uh, and I'm the racing representative, so to say. And that has resulted into something that we can actually go out on track with. Uh, we're actually able to show the fans that motorsport can be done in an electric way and uh, also at a level. And that's been always very important for me from the very beginning. It has to be motorsport. It has to be fast. It has to be aggressive. It has to be competitive. And first and foremost, it has to be a challenge in a sporting way. So I think these uh, basic elements of our future project are uh, incorporated in this car. And uh, it can now be tested on a regular basis. Scheffler has been uh, a partner in the DTM for many years already, but uh, I think the partnership is raised to a next level. Mr. Tink, uh, can you tell us a little about the role in the DTM? Well, so far, first of all, we've been working together with uh, manufacturers uh, because we are supplying many clients in, uh, in the automotive industry. But uh, I would like to thank Gerhard as well. We've been talking about uh, partnership in the series at a very early uh, stage already. And to be able to guide the, the series into the future, uh, it's really pioneering work. Uh, also being able to develop this format, this uh, technology with uh, 1,200 horsepower, the battery uh, capacity, battery technology. And uh, we really want to promote and to advance uh, the development there. Dr. Schroeder, uh, the car has a battery. Uh, there will be probably a pit stop. Uh, will we see a battery change? Uh, what what uh, do we have to look forward to? Well, there is some, some pioneering work in this car to advance it all. Uh, first of all, it's about uh, being able to put uh, the, uh, the performance on the track. Uh, the battery, definitely, the storage capacity. And uh, as we said before, we didn't want to make any compromises. Uh, we want to stage great racing. And uh, battery technology is uh, advanced uh, quite well already. Um, I think to go a full race distance, we still have to change a battery. Uh, what, what would be a full race distance? At the moment, 
uh, we would say 45 minutes we we're doing at the moment. Uh, Gerhard Berger will say a little bit more about it, but I think for a race distance is our goal. From a technical perspective, it's possible. Yeah, definitely. Um, the battery can do so and also the drivetrain. And that's also our aim that we would like to bring from a technology perspective. Uh, the car can deliver the performance and now it's about uh, making it ready for, for motorsport. That's the vision, quite clear. Uh, the formats will be maybe a little bit shorter, uh, maybe it will not be uh, 45 minutes, maybe it will be 35 minutes instead. Um, but uh, we can see a battery change. Um, they're coming in for a pit stop. Uh, they're now maybe uh, fueling up or uh, changing tires, but uh, maybe we see battery changes in the future. We uh, will have the very normal race format uh, we've had so far. Michael, what is different in this series than in other race series we know uh, already? Well, first of all, our approach is that racing has to be fun uh, for a fan and for a driver. That's what we've heard from Timo, uh, plenty of uh, power and uh, reaching, being able to reach uh, speeds of over 300 kilometers per hour on the straights. So uh, it's, it's demanding for a driver as well. You need obviously good braking there in front of the corners as well. And uh, we're really pushing to the limits of uh, what is technically possible. And the driver is delighted, as we've seen uh, with uh, Timo Scheider, in a very special way. Uh, Gerard, final question to you as well, as a race driver. Is that is what it is about, that the race driver is delighted? Mm, I think motorsport uh, covers many different areas. Uh, first of all, you have to be a forerunner in a technical, uh, technological area. But also, at the end of the day, it's sport. So sport is about getting, uh, getting uh, athletes and drivers to the maximum of the possibilities of their performance levels. And it's about to determine who is the best to get the best out of his package and to deal with his car. And uh, to be able to do so, obviously, uh, the car needs to have a certain performance. So uh, what you asked before, the difference to other electric race series, um, we are really in an area of performance where drivers will be uh, getting to the limits. As Timo showed during his brief test drive, he will be some more, uh, doing some more laps today. Uh, you will see uh, a lot more from DTM Electric, not just on German TV, but also on an international level today and tomorrow in the international feed. Gerhard, uh, finally, uh, we see the five pillars of the DTM here with the classic DTM with the new chapter starting in uh, 2021. We have the DTM trophy for young up and coming drivers. DTM eSports becoming more and more important. DTM. Tim Heinemann is a good example of the interaction between the DTM trophy and the eSports. DTM Classic and DTM Electric as a view to the future. Uh, Mr. Zink, Dr. Schroeder, thank you very much. Uh, Michael Gerhard Berger as well, thank you very much for your outlook into the future. And looking forward to the next two days. Yeah, definitely getting back to the championship. Uh, the still two races to go. Uh, very exciting to find out who will become the champion 2020. And I'm really looking forward to it. The race tomorrow, Sat 1 live in Germany from 1 o'clock in the afternoon onwards. Free practice already today on the live streaming platform on DTM Grid. Thanks also to our international viewers and spectators. Thank you very much for your attention. A lot of information on DTM.com as well on the official website, the eSports Finale. I wish you a very entertaining day. And then looking forward to the DTM Finale between René Rust, Nico Müller and Robin Freins. Thank you very much, all the colleagues. Thanks for your interest and look forward to a great weekend of racing here at Tokenheim and looking into the future together. Have a nice morning. Thank you very much and bye-bye.